Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 3 for the Nintendo Famicom system. Last episode, Fang, Tupelo, Tangawini, and Baby Moo freed the Kingdom of Seronia from the clutches of the evil Garuda, who was disguised as the Chancellor. He was manipulating the King, but uh, the King uh, broke free of the Chancellor's spell when uh, the Chancellor tried to force him to kill his son, Prince uh, Alice. But uh, the king would rather sacrifice himself than hurt his son. So, uh, unfortunately, the king passed away, but his son, uh, Prince Alice, is now uh, on the throne. With Prince Alice on the throne, shops have reopened, and the uh, Library of Seronia has also reopened. So we're going to go visit that in honor of Wibbly, the rat who loved to read on uh, Marty Mouse House. For that, we're just going to grab... Uh, three spells here, the Cura for uh, Tangawini and Teleport for Tangawini and Baby Moo. We could have got these earlier, uh, but we didn't need them earlier and we, didn't, we were kind of short on money. So now that we got some uh, money, we're going to just might as well spend it. We also have uh, some new classes here. Uh, we'll see them in action in a little bit. The Geomancer class there, uh, the Fang is in, gets 12 points uh, for using the Terrain Command, a 8 points for fighting, 4 for defending and using an item. The Dragoon gets 12 uh, points for jumping, 8 for fighting and defending, and 4 for using an item. And the Evoker gets uh, 12 points for job levels for using magic, 8 for fighting, and 4 for using an item. So, we'll see all those new jobs in a little bit. But first, we're going to go to the library here and read. You want to go to the center uh, book and then read it. So, Ancient Book Part 1. The four statues will destroy anyone who passes between and protect the crystals. Our four fangs are the only thing that will grant safe passage. Book of Owen 1. I've raised the continent to the sky. The energy source shall be named the Tower of Owen after me. Book of Owen 2. The light is overflowing. Maybe I've miscalculated. I'll send my son Desh into Syro sleep. If the tower malfunctions, my son will wake up to fix it. I'm counting on you. Yeah, so we learn a little bit about Desh there. Ancient Book Part 2. The floating continent is complete. It lies west of the cross-shaped cape of the dog continent. That's good, because we're going to have to go back to the floating continent later. There's some side quests there. We've abused the power of the light. It is overflowing, and we can't stop it. The world is ending. Ancient Book Part 4. The four warriors from the dog world have defeated the light. Who were they? They saved the world. Airships in action. Airships of the year, Nautilus, Invincible, and Enterprise. Well, we just got the Nautilus, we know what the Enterprise was. Haven't heard about the Invincible. The Dark Blade. To master the Dark Blade, find the village of Falgabard in the mountains west of Seronia. A difficult book. The principle behind the time wheel is based on the balance of antimatter. Alright, so we learned a little bit about uh, the ancient flood of light. Apparently, Desh was uh, an ancient. And we learned a little bit more about his past. And we now know we have to go to the Dog Continent. That's where those winds are really, really quick. And they push back the Enterprise. So we're just going to head south. That'll eventually take us to this area. But now with the Nautilus, we can fly fast enough to go through the wind. So, got a new, new, some bunch of new enemies here. We can actually fight them in the, um, uh, what we'll call it, in the, uh, in the sky. So that's pretty neat. Um, uh, Spoiler, eventually we're going to get another airship called the Invincible, and that's pretty neat. It's like the uh, airship in uh, the Talon in Final Fantasy uh, Legend 3, where uh, it starts off the round by getting a free hit on the monster that shoots cannons. So it's pretty neat, so. Uh, there's a new enemy, the Gargoyle, up there. We got to see uh, the uh, Evoker Dupello there use some uh, magic. Uh, it summons a thing, like I say, can deal to some uh, damage or does like a status effect spell. So uh, Shiva does like ice damage or she can uh, mind blast or paralyze the enemy. Got some more enemies here, Chimeras. Uh, Fang uses a thing called Terrain, and the Terrain uh, effect is based on the... Uh, where you're doing fighting at. So we're fighting in the air, so we're going to get like, stuff like uh, tornadoes, uh, and air uh, wind slashes. Uh, if you're underwater, you get like tsunamis, uh, waves, uh, get like cave-ins in like, uh, 
in, in like dungeons and in, in caves and stuff. So, uh, the only problem with terrain is sometimes it can backfire, and if it backfires, then it will do damage to you. So, uh, there's a free. He does fire damage. His support spell is he does. Uh, he heals for a, a little bit. So, basically, like a cure spell. Not too much. Spark is the Ramu. He does lightning damage. And I think he puts, uh. He puts enemies to sleep if he, uh, does the status effect. So, terrain can be very, very powerful, uh. So, it's considered a magic attack. So, it'll be good for the next dungeon we're gonna go into because we're gonna have to mini ourselves for that. That's why we have another white mage. That's why we have, uh, Baby Moo back as the white mage. So, here's that, uh, Simog bird again. So, blue bird on the bottom there. Ran into this group earlier. The escapement is the chocobo. Uh, that leave will come out and do like a non-elemental kick on an enemy, or it'll cause you the support ability is it causes you to run away, uh, guaranteed run away from battle. Uh, but the guaranteed run away is uh, it's very rare. Usually, what happens is the chocobo is supposed to do that. It'll come out and it'll uh, what you call it? Uh, it'll do a trip. It'll say like stumbled. So, if you get a message that says dash, though, your characters will all dash away. So, let's just uh, try all the different uh, things here. We also have the Titan uh, summon, but we don't have enough levels to use that one yet. But we will shortly. So, we just gotta gain another level, and we'll uh, be able to use the Titan. I don't know what he does uh, for his. Uh, Support, but it, he does like a fist punch for uh, his attack. Another new enemy here, the Harpy. There are five enemies in here, so we have to, after the Harpy, the last one we have is a Blizzard uh, fly enemy. So, Tomain, like I said, doing really good there, taking out the Harpy in one hit. Uh, so, we're just gonna farm that uh, final enemy here real quick. Just fly around a little bit. Going, going down, and here we go, the frost fly. So, weak against fire, but, uh, so you can try to roll the dice and use two pillows, uh, summon the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, a freak, uh, the Heatra. Uh, unfortunately, Baby Moo does not have, uh, a, whatchamacallit, uh, a fire staff. She has the Golem Staff and the Ice Staff, so obviously the Ice Staff ain't gonna do good against these guys because they're gonna absorb the ice. Uh, so, you yeah, don't want to summon Shiva. But yeah, we get the Freak there, doing some nice damage there. Too bad he doesn't multi-target everybody, but you have to be a summoner to do that, so. Unfortunately, a lot of the terrain that uh, Fang is gonna use uh, may not do a lot of damage to these guys, so... Luckily, Tangawini, though, can, uh, always help out with, uh, her spears. Like I said, we kept Tangawini as the, uh, physical job just so she can gain some more hit points. Uh, because these, uh, Fang, Tupelo, and Baby Moo aren't in classes that have really good hit point growth. Now, uh, we're going to be minied, and that means that, like, Tang Wing is kind of going to be useless uh, in terms of uh, being able to fight, because you have to use magic to when you're fighting as a mini. Well, uh, that's why we went into the Black Chocobo. Uh, the, not the Black Chocobo, I'm thinking of uh, Final Fantasy IV, the Black Chocobo that flies. We uh, went to the Fat Chocobo and uh, pulled out all those uh, black magic items that can cast black magic spells uh, in battle. So that's what Tangawini will be uh, mainly doing uh, during these battles. When we're mini. Uh, the most powerful one that we got is those free uh, oath uh, drums that we got in uh, Duster, the village of the, uh, the bards and the geomancers. Uh, that's a really strong one. It hits all the enemies, uh, casts a quake spell. Uh, there'll be a few enemies in the mini cave that we're going into uh, that are ground based. Uh, so you want to save the Earth Drums for them. Alright, finally took out that, uh, last, um, 
Frostfly there. And we gained a level up, so that'll give uh, Tupelo, uh, uh, Tupelo the chance to use uh, the Titan summon now. So this here is Dogra's Manor. Who are you? And we get some Moogles, the appearance of Moogles. This is the Wizard Dogra's Manor. Seize them, Kubo. Moogles will be very important in uh, Final Fantasy V and Final Fantasy VI. We get to actually play as a Moogle in Final Fantasy VI. There's Doga, the Light Warriors. So the Crystals chose their warriors. I must tell you something. Zandi unleashed this darkness. Him, Une, and I were once apprentices of the great Magus Noah. When Noah died, I was given magic. Une was given the dream world. Zandi was given mortality. Zandi wasn't too pleased. With the tools of the ancients and the Earth Crystal, he caused the earthquake. But Golda destroyed the Earth Crystal. Golda? He had a fake crystal I made that makes gold. The real crystal is safe. Zandi sealed the power of light and wishes to harness the power of darkness. How sad. We must stop him. I'll give a hand. Doga joined the party. And his moogles are going to run off. Take me to the cave of the circle. Only many can people can enter. The candle in my room is a switch that will open the path to the cave. I've fallen ill. I lack the power to stop Zandi. And with these monsters of darkness, I can't get through this cave of circle. Right, so we're going to have to escort him into the cave. Before we do that, let's talk with all these Moogles. Who is in the dream while sleeping in the shrine south of Saronia? Yeah, we talked with her, but she was sleeping. You can call a fat chocobo in the right hall. Use Gissel Greens on the unlit candle, Kubo. Let's buy some items from this guy here. Get some more uh, high potions. Always good to stack up on them. And get some magic over here. Uh, some new level, uh, level uh, six spells. So we're gonna pick up the bio and a warp, uh, and then uh, two hastes. So uh, Tangawini will get uh, a haste and bio, and Baby Moo will get uh, warp and haste. So yeah, they're just because uh, bio and warp they share the same uh, what we call it uh, slot. And then the, uh, the next six slot will be for the summon magic. So there's the unlit candle. We use a Gissel Green there to summon the fat Chocobo. But we already got all the stuff we need off the Choco Chocobo. Doga said that Zandi was once good. Zandi was once good. He left because he was angry that Noah gifted him the gift of mortality. So that's like Chocobo. I missed what that one guy said. Go back and just pause it, I guess. Use the Gishel Green there, and the Chocobo comes, but we already got all we need off the Chocobo. We pulled all those uh, attacking items off, so... Find a high potion in the bookshelf. Dogo, are you going to the Cave of Circle? Be careful, Koopo. The Cave of Circle leads to the Dog World. It's filled with monsters. Dogo, be safe. The magic water in these pots will restore your MP and health. So the top one gives you back your, uh, revives anybody. Uh, the bottom one gives you back your MP and your hit points. So before we use the bottom one, let's uh, mini everybody up. Put Fang in the back, uh, Tangawini in the back row, and then we'll heal up our uh, hit points and spell charges. Like Doga said, we have to hit the candle that opens the uh, passageway to the cave or circle, and then we hop in the cave. And here we go. It's a small uh, dungeon, three floors. The cave or circle leads to another dimension. The Eureka key is there. Eureka's were weapons of great power created by the ancients are sealed. That's kind of like a bonus dungeon. Uh, it's basically at the end of the game. Uh, you go there and you get a whole bunch of really good equipment, and that's where you can also get the uh, the final jobs, the special jobs. See, so we got these flying enemies, the flyer mage. So we don't want to use the oath drums on them, but we have plenty of other stuff to to use on them. So. Uh, Tangawe uh, uh, Baby Moo can use the arrow spell uh, against uh, enemies like this that are weak against air. Uh, for uh, other enemies, uh, she could use the uh, one of her staffs. She can use the ice staff to do a little bit of ice damage. So not a not going to be a really big source of damage, but every little bit counts. So. Does. Might pick out that one up there. Yep, finish the one off, so. Unfortunately, our uh, terrain went backfired, so. 
can see they had a little bit of better luck. They didn't seem to have too much good, super, a lot of backfiring in this uh, area, so. And, uh, what you call it, uh, Tanguini can also be a backup healer with uh, potions, the high potions that we got. Don't worry about uh, saving a slot for mini, or saving a, a thing for mini. Uh, we'll be warped out of this dungeon when we finish it, so we don't have to unmini ourselves. We've warped out to uh, back to Dogra's Manor, and you know, even if you have no more mini spells left, you can just hit that healing pot, get your charge back, then unmini. So, because uh, I think mini shares the slot with uh, the arrow spell. So, don't worry about saving, you know. Just like I said, use all those items up. So, I'll tell you who, enemies that are good to use the uh, Oath Drums against. There are two groups that are they're really good for. They can pretty much uh, one-shot them, so. Oh, that vacuum slash, good, uh, good damage there. Unfortunately, we're taking a pretty decent amount of damage. Let's see, we get with Ramu here. But he uses attack magic. Luckily, this is uh, the last dungeon we have to really be minied in, so. I do like uh, these kind of dungeons, though. It adds something unique to the, to the game, so. Uh, like I said, I don't do think they do this in any other... Final Fantasies, except for the Final Fantasy IV, uh, the Advanced, the, uh, there's an extra bonus dungeon. The twins uh, have to do something like this. They split up, and one might have to be a toad to um, hit a switch to allow another one to get through the mini area. It's pretty neat, but that's a item. It's a mechanic they haven't really uh, gone back to. At least then, like I said, the ones that I've played. I've played up to eight. Uh, so maybe they've done it more in some of the future ones, but like I said, I stopped at eight. All right, there's a lot of dead ends here, but if you know where you're going, it's a short trip. We're going to just stick to the top here. There's our staircase going down. Here are the Dread Knights. Uh, these are one of the ones that are good to use the uh, Oath Drum against should be able to uh, one-shot them. Uh, so, yeah, you don't want to use the Oath Drum because it's a Quake spell. You don't want to use uh, the Oath Drum on anything that flies because it'll basically just miss. You know, they're, they're floating in the air. They're, it's not gonna, they're not going to be affected by the ground shaking. These guys can also be good because they seem they, they tend to drop uh, like the level 2 uh, magic item spells there, so you can get the ice, the lightning, and then the fire, so. They actually seem to have a pretty decent drop rate. I got quite a few uh, of the items off of them, so. I'm just gonna, mainly using my, my level one one, level one ones right now to just try to get rid of them, so. You can see Baby Moo using the staff. Unfortunately, all wind slash did not uh, backfire it again. So, okay, missed. Yeah, let's see what we got. Oh, actually, did the damage, so that's good. Finished the uh, the dread knight off. Alrighty. I'm just gonna head on down to the level two. We can start meeting some more monsters. We get some job levels there. Oh, no, no monster there. Okay, uh, to the left is the dead end, so all you do is go right here. This is kind of a shorter floor. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's uh, five new enemies in this floor, and we kind of got a farm one on the on the last floor, so. Here's some demon horses. Uh, they appear on the second and the third floor. Uh, this is another enemy group that you could use that uh, Oath Drum on. So I, I used one of them against uh, some of the 
uh, enemies. Uh, I think I'll have to fight with Dread Knights. So that's why I only have one Oath Drum left. So, but we'll get to see it in action here against these demon horses. So yeah, it causes a Quake spell that does pretty good damage. So. Bonk. There we go. Take out all those ones. And we get a high potion out of it. Alright. So this is the third floor. This is where uh, we can only encounter two um, two enemies are only encountered on this floor. So I, I actually um, off-screen farming them. Uh, once again, there's a lot of dead ends. Just, just head straight down and then head over to the uh, left. And that door will take us to where we need to go. So, But we don't want to head up there first because we want to uh, grab this last enemy. So there's two more enemies. Uh, I cut out uh, about seven minutes of grinding, but here are the two enemies, the Rock Gargoyle, which are the Gargoyles, the two, and then we have the uh, Bovian, which is the Minotaur guy, the cow with the axe over there. So, the, the Bo Bovian would be, you know, weak to the uh, Oath Drum, but the Gargoyles, yeah, wouldn't hurt them, so... Yeah, but we're hurting ourselves there with, the uh, once again, the uh, thing backfired. That one right there might be finished. Yep, finished the front rock gargoyle, so. And we get to see what the titan looks like. So he comes out, he does a single punch, clobbered the other rock oil, and now he has the stats for the Bovian. Luckily, these two, uh came in one group together, so I uh, didn't have to spend a lot of time farming. So, like I said, it took about seven minutes. Uh, I think I gained a level. Uh, used up a lot of... used up the, all the other attacking items that I had for Tangaweenie. But, that's okay. We won't need them uh, pretty much after this, so... Free using the fire. He cooked that steak. There we go. And we have gotten all the enemies in this location. So now we can uh, head north. And uh, we don't have any encounters in here. We just have this little seal. And that's where uh, Dogo's gonna come in handy. We've arrived, we must hurry. My time has almost come. I'll cast a spell on your ship to travel underwater. Aquario. So now we got the submarine. The Nautilus can now travel underwater. That allows us to reach that thing. Uh, so I missed there. It says, uh, Head south to Sironi. The Temple of Time lies under the Cape of the Twin Horn. That's where you'll find Noah's loot. Noah's loot? It's a loot that can be heard in the dream world. Use it to call Uni back from there. Now I'll find the Eureka Key. Your task is to wake Une and obtain the great ship Invincible. Now go. Awake Une with the loot until we meet again. Farewell. To warp to try to find the Eureka Key, and then he will warp us out of here. So nice guy. So, and uh, until next time, Light Warriors. He's gonna warp us out of here. You just have to stand here and drink. watch this little cutscene unfold. And all the way back outside. Well, uh, like I said, we can. I should made a. Sa I'm gonna make a save here real quick. And we'll go back in, hit that uh, healing pot again to restore our magic, restore our hit points, and then we'll unmini, and that's what we'll pick up in our next episode. Take care, have a good one, thanks for following along. Bye!